uh, but to be empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, is, it comes from within us and he speaks to us as we fellowship with him and he gives us that power to go forth and the power like uh, Sister Becky was, uh, as she prayed, uh, she said, wherever we put our foot down, uh, that he's going to give that that land to us. He's going to give it to us as we step forward in faith. And, and so that's what we're going to be uh, talking about tonight. And, you know, there are times when we need to get a new focus. There's times when we need to go to the Lord and say, we want to, to know more. We want to re-examine or uh, evaluate where we are in the in our spiritual walk. And so tell us more about what we need to do. I say welcome to Dana tonight. Uh, this, is a, this is a time of, of just bringing our supply uh, and helping each other uh, to be encouraged tonight. And that is something that we all need uh, is that hope and encouragement that we can reach our destiny and fulfill our purpose here on this earth. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred and let him begin to uh, to bring uh, the message that he has uh, tonight. The title of the message tonight is Prophetic Vision Refined. Uh, last week, we started the series on Empowered by vision with the title of the message in a prophetic vision revealed and today we're going to see it can be refined and so uh, when the Lord speaks to us uh, individually or through a prophetic word uh, then we have divine communication with him that sets us on a pathway a vision where we're going and it shows us the direction we're going to go the direction for the future it shows us how to move into God's perfect will, and it has the power within itself to bring itself to pass because uh, from Isaiah 55, 11, uh, his words will not return to him empty or void. Mm. And so when he speaks something to you, it carries power and it will empower you uh, for the path that you have for the future. And uh, I, I want to start with a, a uh, talking about Paul, uh, the man who was first Saul on the road to Damascus, and the Lord Jesus appeared to him, and he said from uh, Acts uh, 26, uh, verse 16, we, we see that he talked about a dynamic vision for uh, Saul. He said, uh, I have appeared to you to appoint you to be a servant and a witness for me in the things that I have shown you and the things I will show you. So there it is. It's not a static vision. And so uh, if you, you're probably at the point you need to be moving to a higher level. I, I believe God wants to move all of us to a higher level and we need a vision refined to move to that higher level. And it's not a static vision. And don't think just because God spoke to you one time or two times or a dozen times and gave you a vision that it's all over with. And we're going to see tonight that it's an ongoing revelation. Mm -hmm. And we see from Proverbs 28, uh, verse 19, that without a prophetic vision, this is, I'm quoting from the uh, Passion Translation, without a prophetic vision, vision uh the people wander astray mm. others say they want they run a while they're yeah. just running wild if they don't have a prophetic vision and by prophetic vision what i'm talking about is divine communication to you about Hallelujah. your path where you're headed uh, what your future is you need that divine communication and i really like what the passage the translation talks about it talks passion. about the passion translation i'm sorry the passion translation uh, talks about a prophetic vision other translations say a vision or a revelation but here it says a prophetic vision 
because it's really talking about divine communication. And, and so that divine communication is an ongoing process. We need to be close enough to the Lord uh, for him to refine our vision. You know, when he speaks to us, sometimes it's just a word. Sometimes we have a vision and that we need clarification. We need an expansion to understand what the Lord has in mind for all of us. Uh, that's very important. And to, tonight I'm going to talk about two apostles, apostle, the apostle Peter and the apostle Paul, and show you how their vision was refined through time. And I think it shows some real insights on how uh, we have our vision refined over time. Uh, I gave you the story uh, last time about Corey Ten Boone, and she was basically the only person in her group of women that was in the uh, concentration camp uh, that got out alive. And what she was doing while she was in the concentration camp in World War II is she was developing a vision for what was going to happen to her afterwards. She was mm -hmm. going to build a rehabilitation center for people who were mentally disabled. Well, another, mm -hmm. so that gives you power. You know, if you've got a vision and even in a terrible place like a World War II concentration camp, uh, she uh, walked out of there where a lot of people died and are even executed. Uh, but she walked out of there because she had a vision that empowered her beyond that point. Well, I want to tell you another man that had a vision beyond his point and uh, beyond uh, being imprisoned. And that was a, a United States pilot who was captured by the Viet Cong, uh, North Vietnam, and they put him. Uh, in a uh, cage, and the cage was too small to lay down, and it was too small uh, to stand up, and, and so he was in that for uh, months, uh, and, but every day he had a vision, and every day he saw himself playing the course at Pebble Beach in California, so he would go out there to the first He's in a cage. He's in a cage. It's too small to stand up and it's too small to lay down. But yet he kept himself active, mentally active, thinking about the vision of going out there, going through every hole on that course to play the golf. And he did that day after day. And he, he had a sound mind. And when he was released, uh, when he got out, mm -hmm. they came back to California and he, he went out there to the Pebble Beach uh, <laughs> golf course. That empowered him. Having a vision Amen. empowers you for life uh, to impact people, to, to have an, uh, an impact on people in this life. And, and so, of course, that might have been just a very natural, but nonetheless, it, it, power powerful. A vision is powerful. Well, I want to talk about these two apostles, and I'll look at their vision and how it changed over time. First, uh, Peter, when he was a disciple of Jesus, and Jesus spoke to all of his disciples in uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 uh, through 8, and he gave them the place, the message, and the method. Uh, for them to mm -hmm. minister. Mm -hmm. And the place was, don't go to the Gentiles, don't go to the Samaritans, Samaritans, go to the lost sheep of Israel. So this is the place. The message was the kingdom message. Wherever you go, proclaim and preach the kingdom is at hand. And the method is to heal the sick, uh, cleanse, cleanse the, the lepers, raise the, the dead, dead, and cast out, out devils. devils. Hallelujah. <laughs> That, so Jesus gave him a vision. That was to all of them, of course, but it was specifically, uh, it also related to uh, Peter. And, and so you think, well, he know, knew exactly what he was going to do, but I'm going to show you in the scriptures that things changed over time and his vision uh, was refined. And in particular, uh, the Lord said to him in Luke 22 that uh, the Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you be converted, strengthen your, your brothers, brothers yes. strengthen them. It's okay. So he's getting a refinement in what he's supposed to do. And then in John 21, this is another important refinement. And it also shows us how we uh, receive our uh, vision as well, because 
Jesus is thinking love. He's thinking on, uh, he's, he's, he's on the wavelength of love. And, he, and he's talking to Peter and he says, uh, Peter, do you love me? And, and uh, Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. And he said, well, feed my lambs. Okay, but see, Peter had to be on the same wavelength as Jesus uh, for him to get this message. And then he says, uh, Peter, Peter, do you love me? He always said, yes, Lord, I, I love you. Uh, well, feed my sheep. So, so see, Peter was on the same wavelength as Jesus, because sometimes Jesus is on one wavelength, thinking about one thing and putting things in context. And, and we have to be we have to be close enough to him that we know his heart and we know what wavelength that he is on. And, he, and now when he's talking to Peter, he's he's on that wavelength of love. And, and he says the third time to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Because this is the wavelength that Jesus was on. And, and so uh, Peter was grieved at that, that he'd ask him over and over again. But you have to be on the wavelength uh, that Jesus is on. And then he said, yes, tend my sheep. And so he's refining the vision, feed the lamb. See, he, he, he was never told beforehand that he was supposed to feed the lamb, but now he's beginning to reveal to him a, re, a refining of the vision. He said, feed my sheep. I mean, my lambs, mm -hmm. feed my, my sheep, lamb. take care of my sheep. But you had to be on that wavelength. If he had said, no, no, I'm not thinking about love. If Peter said, oh, I'm not thinking about love. I don't think uh, Jesus would have given him those assignments that he gave him. Mm -hmm. But where I really want to get to for Peter uh, is uh, Acts chapter 10, because it's very interesting. He went down to the beach. and uh, Vacation! You know, it's real important uh, when <laughs> Sherry and I are uh, wanting to hear from the Lord, we go off. Uh -huh. uh, we go off somewhere. We may go to the beach. We may go There's to the mountains. mountains uh, but we spend time with him. We all of the distractions we lay aside. We just focus on the Lord. And, and there was a time that the doctors in 1992 told Sherry uh, that she didn't, had cancer, terminal cancer, and she was on, only going to live uh, six months. And, and I said, we have the victory over this. And the next thing I said was, go pack your bags. We're going to go off, and we're going to seek the Lord about this. And, of course, in 10 days, she was healed. Now, the doctor said... Yeah. The doctor said she's going to be dead in six months, but in 10 days, days. the healing was manifested, uh, complete uh, deliverance uh, from uh, cancer. Now, going to the beach, I, I can see Peter went down to the beach, uh, down to the seaside. He was up on the mount, I mean, up on the housetop, and uh, I'm sure he was seeking the Lord. Where do I go from here? What do I do from here? Uh, because he was in new territory. He was a pioneer mm -hmm. and he was doing things that nobody else had ever done ever in history. Nobody had ever done what Peter was doing. And I'm sure he was seeking the Lord. Well, you know, my uh, spiritual father, uh, Bob Terrell, uh, told me that uh, when he'd go off uh, to vacation, go down to the beach, that he had to go for two weeks because it took the first week just to quieten his mind so he could hear from the Lord. Now, uh, and then the second week is really when the Lord would begin to download to him. Well, I believe that's what Peter did. He went down to the seaside uh, up on the rooftop, and I believe he was seeking the Lord, and the Lord uh, dropped down this uh, uh, great sheet uh, from the sky and had all kinds of uh, creepy crawlers in it. And, and uh, <laughs> the Lord told uh, Peter to rise and, and kill and eat. And Peter, whoa, no, 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 I, no, I've, never no. Done, I've never done anything like this. So yeah, what I want to want you to see is you've got to take some time because God's going to show you some new things and, and new directions. Hallelujah, and, hallelujah. And, and you've got to get your mind quiet and you've got to be prepared. You've got to be on the same wavelength the Lord is on. And you've got to let him speak to you because he has direction for you. See, if you're trying to hold on and catch hold of natural things, uh, natural direction and carnal direction, it's going to take you down a path of destruction. You must hear from the Lord in order to operate in that supernatural realm. And it's the supernatural realm I'm talking about today, a vision uh, from the supernatural realm. And oh, let me say this. Okay. I've heard this over and over. This question has been asked uh, of me. When, we, when will we get back to normal? 
And I'm just gonna give you the answer to that question so that you don't have to think about it anymore. And that is with the Lord, there is no normal. And so there is just, there's just a, a going on and doing what you know to do uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so normal is not even a, a kingdom word uh, in the name of Jesus. So forget about normal, okay? And uh, let's go uh, forward it, with the exciting things that God has for us. Okay, so the Lord drops down the sheet again. And with all these creepy crawly things on it and says to Peter, uh, rise up and uh, kill it and uh, kill and, and eat. And Peter said, no, but see, in, in doing that, Peter's mind is being messed with. The Lord is messing with his traditions and his oh, religiosity. Hallelujah. Because he's going to send him a, a new place. And then he says to him, there are three men down here and I sent them over here to get you and I'm sending you a new place. See, in Matthew 10, he said, don't go to the Gentiles, don't go to the Samaritans, go to the lost sheep. But now in Acts chapter 10, he said, I'm sending you to the Gentiles. Woo! Hallelujah! Lord, God. <laughs> That's a redirection. Hallelujah. Mm. Now you think, oh, oh, Peter has arrived. I, I mean, he's the head. He's the head of the church on the on the earth. He's <laughs> He's the main guy. He, he's the go-to guy, but what, what Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm changing your direction. I've, I've got a new vision for you. Mm. You're going to open the door to the Gentiles and praise God, praise God that mm -hmm. Peter would go up and go down to the beach and go up on the rooftop and seek the Lord and, and finally get hold of what God was saying to him, that it's supernatural and you go where I send you. You don't go where you uh, get hold with your carnal mind and then sit down on God and not do the new thing that he has for you. Oh, it's God. important for us to catch hold of the new thing and praise God that Peter opened the door for the Gentiles because that's us. Yes, He I opened did. the door for us to Christianity and, and what a great blessing it was. But the Lord had to mess with his mind and his religiosity mm -hmm. and change it and change his vision. He, The Lord himself was sending him to Cornelius and he received, he and the whole household received the, the Holy Spirit, received, they were born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a wonderful time, but that's a refining of the vision. The second man I wanted to talk about is um, Saul on the road to Damascus that we later know as Paul. Okay, so uh, the Lord said to him, Jesus Christ said to him, that I'm going to, uh, I've appeared here to appoint you as a servant and a witness of the things that I have shown you and the things I will show you. You're going to take people from the darkness to light. You're going to take them from the power of Satan to the power of God. And so there he had it. And I'm talking about the Acts chapter 26. There from the beginning, he had a vision, but the vision was refined. And I want to pick it up uh, in Acts chapter 13. Here is uh, Barnabas and Saul, and they are at Antioch. This is one of the greatest mm -hmm. uh, Christian uh, ministry centers in all of history and, and so they were sit, that, sitting there with a pot with the prophets and the teachers and, and they had this great ministry going on there and you think well, well we've reached uh, the apex we we've reached the top there's no other place to go uh, antioch is just this great place for us to be we're uh, sharpening our swords with each other and we've got the leaders uh, christian leaders uh, and they're doing phenomenal things there in Antioch. It's just a great place to be, but they're seeking the Lord. They're fasting, they're praying, they're worshiping the Lord, and the Holy Spirit speaks. How's the Holy Spirit speaks? Well, it's the prophets. Uh, I believe he's speaking through the prophets. So we're talking about prophetic vision amen, today. Amen. And now he said, the Holy Spirit, and, and I believe it was through a prophet who said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work. Hallelujah. Have you been yeah, separated, separated for the work? That means you've been separated from the world. You've been separated away from things and unto 
the Lord. So there was a separation here. And because of this, this is a refinement in his assignment, a refinement in his assignment and a refinement in his prophetic vision. And here comes a prophetic vision, uh, probably from a, a prophet there because he was sitting with the prophets and, and said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul for the work. And now we don't know much about it at that point, but there was definitely a, a refining and a change. But, but we know from what, what he wrote in Ephesians 2.10, that there are works prepared for us from the foundation, foundation. of the earth, mm -hmm. the foundation. Mm -hmm. And those were the works. He was being separated out. He was being called out. He and Barnabas, God had things for them, them that he had prepared uh, before he created the earth. And I want you to know that there are things that God has prepared for you, that he created those things for you to do before he created the earth. And so you cannot touch those with your carnal mind. You cannot touch them uh, without reaching into the supernatural. supernatural realm and hearing what the Lord is saying unto you. This is real important. We have to be in tune to the Holy Spirit. Now, what I want you to know beyond this moment, uh, we begin to see these men as apostles. Now, up until then, they were just in the group and they were just uh, teachers or prophets. But now they are sent ones. And so they're apostles. Ooh, hallelujah. They've gone hallelujah. to a higher level, a higher level in God's government. They are now apostles. And that's very important. And they had so much power because there was a shift in the supernatural realm when this happened. And they moved out and they were... They encountered a person that came against uh, uh, their work, and and Paul called down mm -hmm. uh, Saul called down blindness on him. I, I mean, his uh, power and his authority uh, expanded and multiplied because his prophetic vision was being uh, expanded and clarified and refined. Mm -hmm. Now I want mm -hmm. to follow this a little bit more into Acts chapter sixteen. And there's a couple of verses here that I really want to call attention to because his first choice was to go up into an area we call the Roman province of Asia Minor. And the Holy Spirit in six, Acts 16, 6, forbid him to go, oh, forbid yeah. him to mm, go mm. to a particular place. And, and I've looked at it and studied it in the map and I call it Northeast Turkey. He said, mm. okay, so this was his first choice to go into an area in Northeast Turkey and the Holy Spirit forbid him to go yeah. up there. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, so this is a refinement. He's thinking, oh, this is where I'm going to go, Northeast Turkey. The Holy Spirit said, you will, will not, not go. go. <laughs> and, and, and so what, what he did, now he's Paul. He, he was originally... In this uh, story that I'm telling, he was Saul, but now his name's been changed to Paul. He is the Apostle Paul. He has left Antioch, this great Christian center and, and a place of power. Uh, and, and now he's, he's going to carry the message to some people who have never heard it. And you think, well, we could go any place and carry it. If we're going to tell the good news to some people that have never heard the gospel, that'd be a wonderful thing. But I tell you, you've got to go where the Holy Spirit, Spirit is. sends you. Amen. You've got to go. You've got to have a divine communication. Amen. Uh, you've Amen. got to hear from heaven through the supernatural realm uh, and to know where to go. And this next point, so that was in verse six, the Holy Spirit forbid him to go to where he wanted to go. So now Paul is going to make a slight modification. He's going to go <laughs> North Turkey, North Turkey. First it was North <laughs> Northeast. East, Northeast Turkey. So this is his second choice. I'm going to go to North, North Turkey. Turkey. Okay. So the spirit of Jesus forbidding to go there. Oh, oh wow. We're going to talk about this. Yeah, let's, listen real carefully. See, there are three people in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I began hearing uh, the voices 
the different voices of the three uh, 40 or 50 years ago. I would, we were going to different conferences, prophetic conferences, or Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth uh, Copeland, and, and I would hear uh, these men and women prophesy, and as they were prophesying, I, I'm, I am discerning who it is that's speaking in the Godhead, and, and sometimes it would be the Heavenly Father, and the Father would say mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. like, um, I've seated you in heavenly places mm -hmm, next mm -hmm. to my son, son yeah. and uh, I, I've uh, sent my son to die on the cross for, your, for you and to bear your sins and your sorrows and your sickness and grief. See, so that's the whole, that's the heavenly father speaking. And then those prophets, and I'm talking 40, 50 years ago, mature prophets, and, and they just be giving this prophetic word, but the tone of it would change and the, and the voice would change and the voice would switch to uh, Jesus. And, it, and he'd say, well, uh, you are engraved on my hands. I mean, something like this. You are engraved on my hands. When they nailed those nails in my hands, you were engraved on my, the palms of my hand. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's Jesus. That wasn't the Father. That wasn't the Holy Spirit. And, and so what I'm saying is there are different voices. There's the voice of the Father, the voice of the Son, and the voice of of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. And, and sometimes it may not be real critical that we have to uh, discern uh, which one. But in, in this case, see, uh, within uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 6, the Holy Spirit forbid him to go to the Northeast uh, Turkey. And then he's just going to modify. Uh, yeah, I'll go a little, a little bit. Change. Yeah, we'll yeah, just change it a little bit. bit. So Jesus steps in and yes. speaks. Yes. It's the spirit of Jesus, verse seven. The spirit of Jesus forbid him to go there. Glory to God. I tell you, the Godhead had a different place for him to go and he'd better seek them. Don't go with his first choice. Don't go with his first, second choice. It's the same for you and me. We can't just go with our first choice and okay, the Holy Spirit said, well, no, don't go up there. And so all of a sudden, well, we'll just make, we'll just do a, a slight, slight adjustment, adjustment. <laughs> and, and go where I want to go, but I just slightly different. No. Because it, when I tell you, when Jesus speaks to you, it's going to take hold and, and it, you're going to know that you've been spoken to. And let me tell you that mm -hmm. there have been times that uh, uh, the different persons of the Godhead have spoken to me. But the times and, and the first time I heard a voice from heaven, it was Jesus. And it was had such uh, power and explosion. When I heard it, I jumped up and I ran into another room in the house. I don't have any <laughs> idea what I was going to do, but I knew that was Jesus. And, and that's the authority that he carries. And uh, it was so profound to me. And I don't know if it was audible or not. I was the only person in the house, but, but it was so loud to me and so explosive. I would have said it was an audible voice. Uh, I couldn't prove it because there was nobody here but me. But when I heard it, uh, I just jumped up and ran to another part of the house, not to get away from it, but I, I just didn't know what to do because the <laughs> voice of Jesus carries such power, power and man. such authority and it tells you direction. And that's who has spoken to me uh, in profound ways to give me direction. And the first thing that he said was do the work of an evangelist. Now that sounds pretty simple and and you wouldn't have thought but it was the voice of many waters rolling oh, through eternity yeah, told me that. to do the work of the evangelist when he did it i just jumped up and ran i don't know what i was going to do when i got there but i was <laughs> running when you hear that voice so there's different voices and you've got to be prepared you've got to be on the right wavelength Link. if they're talking about love you need to be thinking about love you need to be close to the, uh, to the godhead close enough to know what they're thinking is at that time and and things are going to change and so if they're thinking about love you need to be oh i'm thinking about love too because our hearts are mm -hmm. knit together but if they're thinking about power and they're thinking about uh, healing revival or they're thinking about then then get in the same wavelength uh, so that they can speak to you and, and you will know the direction to go just like peter okay it may be that you have to quieten your mind well, uh, and get up on, go down to the beach, go up to the mountain, go to the uh, top of the mountain, 
You know, there are times that I fasted and prayed and said, sought the Lord and that's when he'd speak to me and that's when he told me. Mm -hmm. The next thing he told me uh, after we do the work of evangelists was uh, to teach the true, the true riches of the kingdom. And that was Jesus. And so I knew in my knower mm -hmm. that, that it was Jesus speaking to me. There have been times that Jesus has spoken to me. He's given me direction. And so we need to be close enough to the, to the Lord that we know who's speaking. And see, Paul, uh, when, when Jesus, when the spirit of Jesus, Jesus spoke to him. to him, he stood back and said, oh, I better find out where I'm supposed to go. And so he just waited. He just waited until he had a vision of a man from Macedonia. Macedonia. That said, come, come over, over here. here. Come now, Macedonia over here. is modern Greece. So he wanted to stay there <laughs> in modern Turkey, where the area we call Turkey. But the Lord wanted him to go to what is now called Greece. And so that's what he did. But he had to wait on that. And you just can't go out there willy-nilly and go any direction you want to when there are souls at stake, when there are, yes, where amen. there's, uh, lives or waiting on the Lord and right. depending on the Lord and, and asking, um, asking the Lord to do something in their life. And so we have to hear, we have to hear what the Lord wants us to do. We have to have that divine communication, a prophetic, uh, a prophetic vision. And it's a reason it's so important that we need to realize that it's not just me are you it's about us coming together let's hear the spirit what is the spirit saying through the prophets what is he saying through prophecy uh, we cannot uh, receive all of that god has for us by ourselves amen, amen in isolation we need one another Hallelujah. see there was uh Saul at the time, but the one later called Paul, he was with a group of teachers and prophets, and they prophesied to him and released him to do the work that God had called him to do. Hallelujah. Uh, and recently, uh, we've had uh, people call this a school of the prophets. Well, there's a lot of prophets here in our midst, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we are certainly developing uh, prophets and the other gifts and, mm -hmm. and prophecy is an important part of what we do here but the bottom line is God is changing you he's changing what he wants for you uh, maybe he's wanting to give you more wisdom maybe he wants you to operate in more spiritual gifts gifts that he has poured into you that you haven't even begun to mm -hmm. operate in yet uh, we're moving to a higher level that's what uh, that is the area we are in the supernatural realm, God is moving us to a higher level. And, and it may not be geographic change. It, it may be more wisdom and more understanding, more power, Re more revelation. authority, more revelation. So many different ways. You've got to hear divine communication, prophetic, prophetic vision. Well, without it, you'll just wander around lost. Thank you for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to open it up to the floor in just a, a few moments. I, I, hear, I hear comments coming uh, from several people in my spirit, man. And, uh, and I know that the, the Lord wants to move tonight and, and, uh, and just manifest himself to us tonight. Uh, but I thank the Lord for this word uh, tonight. Uh, I know... Um, the Lord has had us in the big white tent uh, for almost three years now. Uh, the, the the tent where uh, we we bring people in and 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 train and and do teaching and and um, then send them out to as as the recruits uh, to do to do the work that God has called them to. But I do believe that this morning I began to hear the spirit of the Lord. Um, start refining uh, the definition of the big white tent. And so I'm, I'm listening. I'm going to be before the Lord, uh, just uh, separating myself out so that I can hear uh, what he's truly saying to me. And I believe that some of you, uh, there's, um, 
there's some busyness there. Uh, and I come against that busyness uh, in the name of Jesus so that you will have time uh, to clear your, your thinking so that you will hear uh, from, from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, that you will know exactly what he wants you to do, uh, that you will be uh, revived, that you'll be refreshed, uh, that you will come before him with a new enthusiasm, a new joy uh, is coming to some of you. And so as we hear from, from the Lord, then we are to be quick to obey and do what the Lord has to say. Also, some of you, there have been some doors opened up. Remember that every door, uh, you have to know which doors are from the Lord and which doors are not from the Lord. And so uh, I speak to you to have wisdom to know which doors to go through and that he will give you a, um, I, I like to, to hear a confirmation from, from the Lord about when he tells me something new uh, to step into, I, I like to hear uh, from, it says in, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And so um, make sure that, that what you're stepping into is, is from, from the Lord, uh, just like uh, Paul wanted to go to a couple of places and that's not what the Lord wanted. And, but he was, he was listening. Paul was listening. He had his spiritual ear open uh, to the voice of the Lord. And so he didn't go to Northern Turkey. He didn't go to Northeast Turkey, but he went to Greece where he was supposed to go. And that's when, when you go where God tells you to go, there will be fruitfulness. There will be fruit for the kingdom that is produced and that we are ordained to bring forth much fruit. Now that's for at least five people right there. You are ordained to bring forth much fruit. That's your ordination, people, in the, in the name of Jesus. And so wherever God sends you, then there will be fruitfulness. There will also be provision because some of you, the Lord, you've had something in your spirit, man, but you said, I don't have the finances to do it. Well, the Lord, wherever the Lord sends, there will be provision. Just ask Paul and Pat. Isn't that true? Amen. He will provide what, whatever he tells you to do, wherever he tells you to go, there will be provision. Uh, that is there for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like Elijah was told to go to Seraphath and that there would be a widow there that would sustain him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So if there is a struggle in your life, then you need to step back. You need to fast and pray and you need to hear from the Holy Spirit what you're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. There is, I, I'm talking about struggle with provision, struggle with, uh, with producing fruit. Uh, then you need to go back to the, back to the source and the source is the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to open up the, the floor now. If you have a comment that you'd like to make about, about this message, uh, if you have a word for someone, uh, from the Lord, from the Holy Spirit, um, and Brother Jack just wrote, um, if led uh, of God, provision provided for. Amen. 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 That's exactly right. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to open it up now. Just unmute yourself if you have uh, something you'd like to share. Well, if I could, I, I'll share with me how um, the Lord one time with my vision, it wasn't correct and how the Lord um, 
corrected me and, and confirmed to me what I wanted. There was a time uh, at my job that there was a big promotion that came up and I applied for the promotion and I didn't get it. And it really hurt me because, you know, I, when I'm there, I do like we all do. I perform my job as I'm not working for man, but for the Lord. And the, the job wasn't given to me and, and I was hurt and, and the Lord refined my vision by me being at work there one night. And I'll, I wrote down the way the Lord spoke to me. And, uh, he said, for such a time as this said, this promotion was allowed to be de uh, denied by man. So I would not trust in uncertain riches. And he gave me first Timothy six seventeen. And it says, man esteems the supervisory jobs here as awe inspiring positions and people there trust in their riches. <clears throat> and, um, said things that man esteems greatly are abomination in the sight of God. But if you'll be mm -hmm. faithful with little, you'll be ruler over much. And amen, so amen. with this, my vision had gotten very clouded because, you know, when you, uh, and, and I've heard brother Fred, you know, when they, that position was, you were bypassed with that. Um, but that was yours. Well, this bypass was not meant for me. And the way the Lord really spoke to me uh, about it and, and deepened it to me, if I had have taken that supervisory job, if it had been given to me, I would have been so overwhelmed with the responsibilities and the studies that it took, I would have turned, I would have turned my back on the Lord. Hmm. So after he spoke to me, because I was, I was really hurt. I was deeply hurt, but now I thank God, you know, because he did that. And just like you said, you talked about this in the message, be careful of the doors and make sure that that doors of the Lord, because this one, even though it looked good and it would have probably, I don't know, $50,000 a year more salary, mm. but it was not of him. So what good would that have done for me to get that job? Right. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Jack. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Someone else share with us. What are you going to take from this message tonight? I have something. Okay, Rebecca. Um, the Lord would say unto us tonight that um, he's going to give you an appetizer. You know, um, that's a little sample a little taste and see that the Lord is good as he is leading and guiding you. Uh, and he wants you to go in a certain direction. He wants you to partake of this revelation. Um, we need sometimes an appetizer and the Lord Jesus says, um, I'm so patient. I'm so humble. I'm so willing to be there with you and even take your little foot and, and lift it up and set it down for you. And he says, so I'm going to give you an appetite for what I am putting within you. And that appetite, you, you sometimes you just have to eat to get hungry. Amen. You have to eat to get hungry. And so as this revelation that he's coming out, he's going to um, give you some examples, he said, from his word. He's going to show you, uh, Brother Fred has just, uh, has just so graciously poured out those examples uh, to just help us. It's like a stepping stone to just keep you, whoosh, to mm -hmm. keep Amen. you moving, on, to moving on to that place that he has lined up for you to get you to go where he's showing you. And he says, um, he's going to show you right there, even before you put your foot down in that new direction, oh, yeah. that new level. And, um, and he's going to say to you, um, if you think that you can do this thing on your own, <laughs> then, then that vision 
is not yet refined. <laughs> it is not yet big enough because the vision he's going to give you will be much bigger than what you think that you could ever do. Amen. Amen.